Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the STG-44 Assault Rifle. This is the third of three new weapons added to Advanced Warfare today. This one can be unlocked via supply drops. It can only be unlocked via supply drops. Actually, normal or advanced both work. Before we get going too much further, I would like to give a shameless shout out to J-Hub, who spent a significant amount of his morning unlocking some of these weapons and testing them out for me to send me some good data here. So big thank you to J-Hub. He helps me with a ton of videos on this channel, a ton of in-depth help, uh, help, and uh, a lot of the videos that you see probably wouldn't be around without his help, so thank you, J-Hub. This is generally considered the first assault rifle ever made, like the very first one. This one showed up at the very end of World War II, and is the retro weapon that was added to Advanced Warfare for this pack. I thought I'd just give you a little history on it. Let's talk about the damage first. It'll deal 40 damage up close, which is very high for assault rifles in Advanced Warfare, 33 damage at medium range, which is one point shy of the damage required to get a three shot kill and 24 at long range is similar story what this means is that it will take between three and five shots to kill and for those of you that play competitive or use stun grenades i would like to note that that medium damage 33 range means you can shoot somebody three times and if they get around the corner you can toss a stun around the corner and the detonation from the stun grenade will kill them that makes it a high damage assault rifle in advanced warfare headshots deal 1.1x damage or 10 percent more damage than normal this is useful at medium medium and long ranges. It won't help you get two shot kills up close. It's three, still three shots to the head up close. However, at medium ranges and at long ranges, if you sneak in a headshot, that's going to drop your shots to kill by one, meaning you can still three shot at long ranges, which is very, very useful. The three shot kill range is one of the most important things about this weapon. It's one of the things that truly make it the powerhouse that it is. And the three shot kill range is 16.5 meters. And I want to point out that this is a very long three shot kill range for fully automatic weapons in advanced warfare. In comparison, the bow three shot range is five meters, and that's considered significant enough that a lot of people don't run submachine guns. The AK-12 is considered to have good range, and its four shot range is 10 meters, four less, you know, more than three, it takes longer to kill. The Mark 14 has a three shot range of the, uh, of the STG 44. So keep the, keep in mind that the STG 44 has the exact same three shot kill range as the Mark 14 assault rifle and the only fully automatic weapon, or really the only assault rifle at all that has a longer range than the STG 44 is the HBRA 3. And that three shot range is a little bit longer at 23 meters, but I just wanted to make the point that this gun has a very, very good three shot kill range and that makes it a very good weapon. Another thing it has going on for it is it has the rate of fire of 720 rounds per minute. Note that it's coded at 750, but after frame rounding, what you're going to get is 720. This is the exact same fire rate as the AK and the BAL. Those two do fire at the same speeds. So we did that in a different in-depth episode. So you've got the exact same fire rate as the AK-12 and the BAL, except you have three-shot kill ranges, whereas the AK-12 doesn't, and you have a longer three-shot kill range than the BAL. What that means is the STG-44 has an overall fast time to kill, and and it's a very high DPS weapon. You are really going to pump out what damage with the STG-44 that matches the theme of the gun, that matches the feel of the gun, the sounds and all that, and it's gonna make total sense in your hand that this is a high damage weapon. While the damage is awesome, and I've talked a lot about it, the STG-44 does have some serious downsides. One of them is the recoil. The recoil is high. I almost put medium, but no, let's let's be honest here, the recoil is high, and it's got a lot of side-to-side -side wobble. So some people can deal with high recoil as long as it's only vertical, or some people can even deal with the annoying side-to-side -side wobble as long as it doesn't kick up too much. Unfortunately, the STG-44 does both, and I'm going to say statistically speaking, it's similar to the HBR-A3, with the exception of the fact that the HBR3 slows down over time so it's easier to control whereas the STG44 does not it stays difficult to control J-Hub who supplied this gameplay uh, compares the recoil as being very similar to the AK well, let's see the AK47 from Modern Warfare 3 he says it feels like despite the skin a hybrid between the Modern Warfare 3 and Modern Warfare 2 AK47 assault rifles and that you should expect high recoil and it's difficult to deal deal with that's why in the attachment sections later on we are going to be recommending a foregrip. The hipfire spread is normal, at least as far as assault rifles go. It is not tighter, it is not wider, it is not more unique or different than any of the other assault rifles. It statistically has the exact same hipfire spread as the rest of them. I'd just like to point that out. Magazine size is 30. When you put extended mags on it, that's going to go up to 45, which is very standard for assault rifles, nothing really special there. Wall penetration is medium. That is, again, normal for assault rifles, but you can actually wall bang with this weapon, and it's a little bit better 
better than some of the other assault rifles for wall banging because banging, it's got that high 40 damage up close, which means you have less reduction through on the other side. Next up, I would like to point out that the reload cancel time is faster than a normal assault rifle. It has a similar animation time, actually has a longer animation time than some of the other assault rifles, but the time at which you can sprint forward, YY or any of the other type of reload cancels is faster than the other assault rifles. It's not crazy faster, it's not significantly faster, it's 200 milliseconds faster. Some of you might notice this, some of you might get it good at the timing for some of you reloading is a huge deal, but I would point it out, but no, it doesn't compete with the IMR reload cancel. The IMR probably has the beastliest reload cancel of any COD gun, game gun. Eh, eh getting my words mixed up here. It's been a long day doing videos, guys. Not quite the IMR reload cancel, but definitely noticeable faster. The aim down sights time, sprint out time, raise drop, move speed, and all of the rest are exactly the same as the rest of the assault rifles, so you won't have any sort of significant performance changes on this, with the exception of some of the variants do have faster and slower aim down sights time, and some of them do have slightly slower and faster raise drop times. Not such a big deal there, but I thought I would point it out just in case you were curious. As for what I think about this weapon and how you should be using it, this is an excellent all-purpose assault rifle if you can handle the recoil, and I really want to stress that this is a very, very, very strong, very good, very powerful assault rifle, but the recoil is dumpy and it's frustrating, and I think that is the only thing that makes it fair. Perhaps in the, very, in the hands of a very, very skilled player, it might seem very unfair, though. And just to stress this, it competes with the BAL, IMR and AK-12 for assault rifle dominance. It has an overall faster time to kill over ranges than the BAL, but it kicks a lot more. It deals a lot more damage than the IMR, but it kicks a lot more. And it also outranges the AK-12, even though the AK-12 has excellent range, but it kicks way more than the AK-12 because that's, you know, a lower damage kind of thing. I believe the idea at Sledgehammer, the guys are probably sitting around and like, let's put in a really strong assault rifle. Let's put in one that really kicks a lot of butt, that really does a lot of damage, and that people are really going to like using. But to make it fair, we have to give it really crappy recoil. We have to give it frustrating iron sights. We have to give it a lot of downsides. Otherwise, all of our other weapons are going to be kind of kicked to the curb here. So they put in the high damage weapon, and they just made it have god-awful recoil. So if you can deal with that, you can definitely deal with this weapon. So again, if you're good with it, if you're okay and comfortable with the recoil, you can use this as a very good rough-and-tumble assault rifle. Personally, I know I'm terrible with high recoil weapons, so I'm probably only going to use this one on shorter, kind of close-range maps. I'm not going to be breaking it out on anything long-range because it won't hit the broadside of a barn. But something like Bio Lab or urban or something I feel it'll be very very good the best attachments for this weapon are all attachments that are going to help you with the recoil first and foremost for foregrip that is a must that's going to cut the recoil a bit that's going to make it much easier to handle much more doable the next one we're going to put on here is a red dot sight the iron sights on this one they're usable not my cup of tea, but you can use them. The red dot sight is going to make your target acquisition much clearer, and it's going to make the it's not going to decrease the recoil. I want to point that out, but it's going to make it easier to handle. It won't feel as bad. You'll be able to track a little bit easier. And a lot of people like to aim with the left stick, so we're going to add stock. Stock is pretty much essential for assault rifles in advanced warfare or really any COD game. Stock is one of the best attachments ever added to a COD game. So this one gives you the option of aiming on your, well, let's see, yeah, when you're standing still, that's gonna be the X-axis with your left stick a little bit, that's gonna help you out, and it's gonna make you more mobile. That is definitely how I would run the gun. I'm not gonna run it stealthy, I'm not gonna run it with extended mags or anything like that. And as for the variants, I wanna point out that all of the variants are good and an improvement over the base STG44. Any variant that you pick up is going to be better than the base. Now, some variants, of course, are better than others, but all of these are quite good. There are no bad variants, nothing you should avoid, and I would pretty much use any of these over the base anytime. There's only a handful of them, so I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. The STG44 Relic is awesome. It fires faster at 857 rounds per minute and has less recoil, apparently. The Iron Claw and Royalty variants aim down sights faster, which is good. And the Royalty variant has a little bit of extra range. They both have less recoil, thank God, because they have enough recoil already. The Smokeless, which we're moving down into Professional Nile, is pretty much the same as the rest, but with less kick. And the Vampire has higher rate of fire, which is good, that's faster time to kill, but unfortunately more recoil, which is a little bit frustrating. But again, any of these are better than the base, vari base variant, and all of these are quite good. 
pretty much any STG44 you pick up, you should be very happy with. Guys, that's all for this in-depth episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the Blunderbuss shotgun, and the next episode is going to be on the SVO sniper rifle, which is... That, that's going to be an interesting episode. You're going to want to see that one. Drifter out.